I'm going to talk a little bit more about ellipses in this video. In this particular case, is we're going to deal with an ellipse and try to describe it uh, in polar coordinates relative to a focus. Why that's important is that in celestial mechanics or any sort of orbiting body around a larger body is it always traces out elliptical paths and the uh, larger body about which a satellite uh, orbits is always lying at one of the foci. There's two foci to an ellipse. So in the case of say like the Earth orbiting the Sun, the Sun would be at one of the foci, let's say at that one, and the Earth would be orbiting around it. So it's natural to describe the Earth's orbit it centered at the Sun. So there will be a radial vector and then there will be some angle theta. Now the radial vector will be a function of theta and R changes as we sweep out an angle. The angle is going to be measured with respect to the positive x-axis and the <clears throat> length of the semi-major axis is A, the length of the semi-minor axis is B. And this is just the first chord quadrant I'm showing here, is that the distance from the center of the ellipse to the foci is EA, where E squared is 1 minus B over A squared. That's the eccentricity of the ellipse. So E times A, where A is the length of the semi-major axis from the center on out to the edge. And so, uh, as you can see, as the orbiting body moves around, this position vector R changes in length as we sweep out with an increase the angle theta. And the positive direction for theta is counterclockwise. So what we're going to do now is uh, derive the equation that describes this motion in polar coordinates. That is, we want to find r as a function of theta. <clears throat> so we make some observations here that at any point <clears throat> xy on the perimeter of the ellipse, we can describe it in polar coordinates if we have an x-axis and a y-axis, that point is xy. Well, x, written in terms of these polar coordinates, would be this value of x here, which is ea plus r times the cosine of theta. So what we have is this, is here's along our x-axis, that's the center, here's our focus, here's out to point x, y, this is angle theta. <laughs> so this portion here, if this is our radial vector out, this is r cosine theta, and this part is ea, so we can write x equals ea plus r cosine of theta. The y value is this, which is r times the sine of theta, so y equals r sine of theta. <clears throat> Those are the equations we're, we're starting with, and the ellipse in Cartesian coordinates has this description. It's x over a squared plus y over b squared is equal to 1. So. We want to find r of theta such that it satisfies this equation. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> we'll start here. We'll write x over a. So we've got x over a is equal to e plus r over a times the cosine 
of theta. <clears throat> and we're going to form y over b, which would be r over b times the sine of theta. Now, we're going to put these in to this equation, so we form x over a squared plus y over b squared equals 1. So we have e plus r over a times the cosine of theta squared plus r over b sine theta squared is equal to 1. <coughs> now, we're going to expand this out. So we have uh, e squared plus 2er over a times the cosine of theta plus r over a squared cosine squared theta plus r over b squared sine squared theta and that is equal to 1. <clears throat> now I'm going to bring the 1 over and form uh, e squared minus 1 bringing the 1 onto the left side plus then we have this term so we have 2 e cosine theta yeah. all over a times r plus I'm going to factor out an r squared so we have r squared times we've got cosine squared theta all over a squared plus sine squared theta all over b squared and this is equal to zero. I've rewritten the board to give us a little more room to work on. Here is all the pertinent information. Um, here we have relationships involving the eccentricity and the semi-major and minor axis. Uh, here is the x and y Cartesian coordinates in terms of the uh, polar coordinates relative to the focus. And then here's our Cartesian equation for the ellipse. And this is what we uh, started with. Uh, we formed x over a, y over b, squared them, summed them, and put them in there. And this is what we've ended up with. Now, <clears throat> we notice that the equation is quadratic in the radius. So we can solve for the radius using the quadratic formula. That is r is equal to negative of the linear term, so minus 2e cosine theta over a plus minus this term squared, minus 4 times this term and this term. So it's minus 4 uh, times the quantity e squared minus 1 times this quantity all over twice this quantity. So that's what we have for r. Now, we're going to work under the radical, uh, look at reductions that we can find in the, um, ter the sum of the terms under the radical. So, let's go ahead and write out the radical <clears throat> here on the board. I'll do that in red to separate it. So we have 2e cosine theta all over a squared and then we have a minus 4 e squared times this plus 4 times this so we have minus 4 e squared times cosine squared theta over a squared minus 4 e squared sine squared theta over b squared and then we have a minus 4 times minus 1, which is a plus 4 cosine squared theta all over a squared plus 4 sine squared theta all over b squared. <clears throat> now, notice right offhand 
here that if we square this term, it's identically equal to this. This squared is 4e squared cosine squared over a squared. So these two terms cancel. <clears throat> now, what we want to do uh, here is <clears throat> um, combine what we can here is we will combine this term with this term, the sine squared. So we'll write this out as 4 cosine squared theta. This is over a squared. And then we combine the coefficients here. Um, that's a plus. <clears throat> so we have plus. We have 4 over b squared sine squared minus 4 e squared over b squared times sine squared theta. Now let's factor out a 4 over b squared and let's substitute in for sine squared 1 minus cosine squared. So we can take this now and write it as 4 cosine squared theta over a squared plus 4 over b squared times 1 minus e squared times <clears throat> sine squared which would be 1 minus cosine squared theta. Now let's look at <clears throat> this term here, this coefficient. 1 minus e squared is b squared over a squared. So we can make our substitution that 1 minus e squared, this is b squared over a squared, and the b squareds cancel, so this ends up being 4 over a squared. So writing this out, we have 4 cosine squared theta over a squared, and then we have 4 over a squared times 1 minus 4 over a squared times cosine squared theta. Notice these two terms cancel and we're left with 4 over a squared. That goes under the radical. So this now becomes minus 2e cosine theta all over a plus minus the square root of 4 over a squared, which is 2 over a, over 2 times what's in the denominator there. Now notice our 2's can cancel, and we can write this now, r as minus e cosine theta all over a plus minus 1 over a times cosine squared over a squared plus sine squared theta over b squared. Now, <clears throat> let's look at the plus minus sign here. Is we need the radius to always be positive. It can't be negative. The denominator is always positive because we've got squared functions. So this is always positive. E is less than or equal to 1. Cosine is less than or equal to 1. So in order for this to always be positive, we have to choose the plus sign here to add 1 to this. So we can now write this as 1 minus e times the cosine of theta all over. We bring our a down so we've got cosine squared theta <clears throat> 
over A plus A over B squared sine squared theta. Now, <clears throat> let's multiply the numerator and the denominator through by A squared B squared. So this becomes A squared B squared times 1 minus E cosine theta all over, if we multiply through by A squared B squared, <coughs> then this becomes um, <coughs> B squared A times the cosine squared theta plus <coughs> A cubed sine squared theta. So R is now in the numerator we have A squared B squared times 1 minus E cosine theta and in the denominator we have b squared a times the cosine squared theta plus a cubed sine squared theta and we can cancel out a's we can get rid of this a here This becomes a squared, and this just becomes a. Now, <clears throat> we will substitute in for sine squared in the denominator. So we get a b squared, 1 minus e cosine theta b squared cosine squared theta plus a squared minus a squared cosine squared theta. We can <clears throat> combine like terms in the denominator. We get a b squared 1 minus e cosine theta and then we get b squared minus a squared times cosine squared plus a squared. Now, let's look at what b squared minus a squared is. From here, we can see that b squared minus a squared is just minus a squared e squared. So this becomes minus a e squared. So we can write this now as a b squared, 1 minus e times the cosine of theta all over a squared minus a squared e squared cosine squared theta. Again, we can get rid of some of our a's. The a in the numerator cancels with an a in each one of the terms in the denominator. And we can now write this, pulling out an a, We've got b squared over a times 1 minus e cosine of theta times 1 minus e squared cosine of theta. Now this is a perfect square. So this becomes b squared over a times 1 minus e cosine theta and this is 1 minus e cosine theta times 1 plus e cosine theta. And the 1 minus e cosine theta is cancel, and we're left with b squared over a divided by 1 plus e cosine theta. So <clears throat> I'll write that here. Our final form. <clears throat> 
So now our R becomes B squared over A times 1 over 1 plus E cosine theta. So there we are with our polar form for the um, radial distance out from the focus out to the perimeter of the ellipse. <clears throat> now we can write this in a, uh, another form making use of the fact <clears throat> that if we um, look at b squared over a if we multiply here through by a 1 minus e times a equals b squared over a so we can make the substitution for b squared over a <clears throat> this is a times 1 minus e over 1 plus e cosine theta so we have our radius <clears throat> or um, our radial magnitude from the focus out to the perimeter of the ellipse in terms of the semi major axis and the eccentricity and the angle theta. So there are our final forms. <clears throat> so we indeed see that <clears throat> the polar form for a uh, where we're writing the polar form relative to the focus that it has a very simple form which is kind of surprising so we can now write <clears throat> that R of theta is B squared over A times 1 over 1 plus E cosine theta or also the alternative form we have a times 1 minus e over 1 plus e cosine theta so that's our final form <clears throat> for the polar form for an ellipse when we're measuring from one of the foci <clears throat> so there we are with the pertinent equations this is all relative to the focus so again the usefulness of this is if we have some orbit about a focus then this is gives us the radial distance out from the focus <clears throat> out to a point say as an object is moving around the ellipse then as we change the angle theta our th theta measurements are in a counterclockwise direction so as theta progresses from the positive x-axis then this tells us how the radial vector changes in magnitude as theta is increasing now <clears throat> of course how much this vector changes in magnitude depends on the eccentricity for a circle remember the eccentricity is zero so r then when e equals zero then r is equal to b squared over a because e goes to zero this becomes one but when e is zero <coughs> b squared is equal to a squared or b is equal to a so when b is equal to a we get a squared over a or just a so the eccentricity gives us a circle of radius a <laughs> so there we have it there's the polar equation for a uh, ellipse when we're measuring relative to a focus. As one last exercise, 
we're going to go ahead and start with the polar form of an ellipse relative to the focus and show that it satisfies the Cartesian equation for an ellipse. We know that's got to be true we, because we derived this from this particular equation given these relationships between the eccentricity and the semi-major and semi-minor axis. But we'll just go ahead and verify it anyway. Uh, again, this equation gives us the radial distance from a focus out to a point on the perimeter of the ellipse as a function of theta. Now, we form the x and the y. The x and the y in Cartesian coordinates written in terms of the polar form is given by this. x is this distance from the center to the focus which is Ea plus r times the cosine of theta. That is the projection of r onto the x-axis and then y is just r times the sine of theta. So let's first start with x. x is Ea plus r times the cosine of theta. Here's our r, b squared over a times 1 plus e cosine theta, and that's times cosine theta, put over a common denominator. So we have a over times 1 plus e cosine theta multiplying by Ea. So we have Ea times a gives us a squared, and then times this part plus b squared cosine theta. Now, we can expand this out and we note that we have Ea squared, then we will uh, factor out the cosine theta and the rest of the term, so we have a b squared, and then we have an Ea squared times E or an Ea squared. But let's look at this form here, Ea squared plus b squared, if we look at this form, b squared uh, or Ea squared plus b squared, if we bring it to this side, that's just a squared. This goes to a squared. So putting that in, we have Ea squared plus a squared cosine theta. That's what the numerator reduces to, and then in the denominator we have this. We factor out an a squared, and then we have an a squared over here in the denominator, and the denominator a cancels with one of the a squareds in the numerator, so we can write it in this fashion. <clears throat> now, that gives us our x. How about our y? y is r times the sine of theta, r is b squared over a times uh, divide by 1 plus e cosine theta, and then that is times the sine of theta. <clears throat> so that's our uh, form there. Now let's form x over a. x over a squared and y over a squared and that's going to be equal to 1. Well x over a, if we bring the a down and square it, this becomes e plus the cosine of theta squared over 1 plus e cosine theta squared, that's x over a, plus y over b gives us a b sine theta squared in the numerator, and then um, an a squared <clears throat> times 1 plus e cosine theta squared. <clears throat> now let's put it all over a common denominator here. So we have 1 is equal to, let's get our common denominator, which is 1 plus e times the cosine of theta squared. So expanding this out, we have e squared plus 2e times the cosine of theta plus cosine squared of theta. And then we have plus b squared 
over a squared, we pick up the a in the denominator and combine it with the b squared times sine squared theta. Now, we want to have all cosine terms in our numerator. We have cosine, cosine squared, and sine squared. Well, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So we can write sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared theta. Now, we can combine all our terms. <clears throat> Go ahead and do that up here. Okay, so we're taking this now and we're going to combine our cosine squares. So we now have 1 is equal to, let's write out our denominator first, 1 plus e cosine theta quantity squared. And then we have uh, e squared plus 2e cosine theta, and then we're going to uh, add our b squared over a squared, and then factor out our cosine squareds. So cosine squared, we have a 1 here, and then we have a minus b squared over a squared. What's 1 minus b squared over a squared? Well, it's e squared. So that can be replaced. This term here just goes, becomes e squared. And how about e squared plus b squared over a squared? Well, e squared plus b squared over a squared is just 1. So I can rearrange this expression. I'm going to uh, just flip these two terms. So I'm going to write the expression in this fashion. Just rewrite our numerator. The numerator <clears throat> then uh, becomes e squared plus b squared over a squared. So this is e squared plus b squared over a squared. And then we have plus 2 e cosine theta. And then we have our cosine squared and minus b squared over a squared. All right, now let's look at this. What's e squared plus b squared over a squared? This is just equal to 1. This quantity goes to 1. So this thing simplifies down, <clears throat> and we can see that 1 equals... We want to know if this reduces to 1. So we have 1 plus 2e cosine theta plus e squared cosine squared theta times 1 plus e cosine theta quantity squared. Well, what's this? This is a perfect square. This numerator can be written is 1 plus e cosine theta quantity squared, and that's the same as the denominator. So thus it's proven that that goes to 1. So it's proven that this satisfies the equation of ellipse written in Cartesian coordinates. So that's going to about wrap it up for ellipses for now. That's all I'm going to uh, be doing for a while. Uh, the videos that will be coming up, we'll be doing another uh, ballistic projectile um, uh, problem.
Uh, I have yet to uh, finish up with some Electric Universe papers, particularly the Morton Spears paper, in finishing debunking that. And then there's one by Ashcroft and, or Ashmore and uh, one other author having to do with uh, uh, galactic rotation, trying to attribute uh, electrical nature to it, which is uh, wrong also. That, that, that paper uh, um, is just uh, a bunch of nonsense. Anyway, so that's where it's at. Uh, until next time, enjoy. As one last exercise, we're going to go ahead and start with the polar form of an ellipse relative to the focus and show that it satisfies the Cartesian equation for an ellipse. We know that's got to be true we, because we derived this from this particular equation given these relationships between the eccentricity in the semi-major and semi-minor axis. But we'll just go ahead and verify it anyway. Uh, again, this equation gives us the radial distance from a focus out to a point on the perimeter of the ellipse as a function of theta. Now, we form the x and the y. The x and the y in Cartesian coordinates written in terms of the polar form is given by this. x is this distance from the center to the focus, which is Ea plus r times the cosine of theta. That is the projection of r onto the x-axis. And then y is just r times the sine of theta. So let's first start with x. x is Ea plus r times the cosine of theta. Here's our r, b squared over a times 1 plus e cosine theta, and that's times cosine theta, put over a common denominator. So we have a over times 1 plus e cosine theta multiplying by Ea. So we have Ea times a gives us a squared, and then times this part plus b squared cosine theta. Now, we can expand this out, and we note that we have Ea squared, then we will uh, factor out the cosine theta and the rest of the term. So we have a b squared, and then we have an e a squared times e, or an e a squared. But let's look at this form here. e a squared plus b squared. If we look at this form, b squared, uh, or e a squared plus b squared, if we bring it to this side, that's just a squared. This goes to a squared. So putting that in, we have e a squared plus a squared cosine theta. That's what the numerator reduces to. And then in the denominator, we have this. We factor out an a squared. And then we have an a squared over here in the denominator. And the denominator a cancels with one of the a squareds in the numerator. So we can write it in this fashion. <clears throat> now, that gives us our x. How about our y? y is r times the sine of theta. r is b squared over a times uh, divide by 1 plus e cosine theta. And then that is times the sine of theta. <clears throat> so that's our uh, form there. Now let's form x over a. x over a squared and y over a squared and that's going to be equal to 1. Well x over a, if we bring the a down and square it, this becomes e plus the cosine of theta squared over 1 plus e cosine theta squared. That's x over a plus y over b gives us a b sine theta squared in the numerator and then um, an a squared <clears throat> times 1 plus e cosine 
theta squared. <coughs> now, let's put it all over a common denominator here. So we have 1 is equal to, let's get our common denominator, which is 1 plus e times the cosine of theta squared. So expanding this out, we have e squared plus 2e times the cosine of theta plus cosine squared of theta. And then we have plus b squared over a squared. We pick up the a in the denominator and combine it with the b squared times sine squared theta. Now, we want to have all cosine terms in our numerator. We have cosine, cosine squared, and sine squared. Well, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So we can write sine squared as 1 minus cosine squared theta. Now, we can combine all our terms. <clears throat> Go ahead and do that up here. Okay, so we're taking this now and we're going to combine our cosine squares. So we now have 1 is equal to, let's write out our, our denominator first, 1 plus e cosine theta quantity squared. And then we have uh, e squared plus 2e cosine theta, and then we're going to uh, add our b squared over a squared, and then factor out our cosine squareds. So cosine squared, we have a 1 here, and then we have a minus b squared over a squared. What's 1 minus b squared over a squared? Well, it's e squared. So that can be replaced. This term here just goes, becomes e squared. And <clears throat> how about e squared plus b squared over a squared? Well, e squared plus b squared over a squared is just 1. So I can rearrange this expression. I'm going to uh, just flip these two terms. So I'm going to write the expression in this fashion. Just rewrite our numerator. <clears throat> the numerator <clears throat> then uh, becomes e squared plus b squared over a squared. So this is e squared plus b squared over a squared. And then we have plus 2 e cosine theta. And then we have our cosine squared and minus b squared over a squared. All right, now let's look at this. What's e squared plus b squared over a squared? This is just equal to 1. This quantity goes to 1. So this thing simplifies down, <clears throat> and we can see that 1 equals we want to know if this reduces to 1. So we have 1 plus 2e cosine theta plus e squared cosine squared theta times 1 plus e cosine theta quantity squared. Well, what's this? This is a perfect square. This numerator can be written as 1 plus e 
cosine theta quantity squared and that's the same as the denominator so thus it's proven that that goes to 1 so it's proven that this satisfies the equation of ellipse written in Cartesian coordinates so that's going to about wrap it up for ellipses for now that's all I'm going to uh, be doing for a while uh, the videos that will be coming up will be doing another uh, ballistic projectile um, uh, problem uh, I have yet to uh, finish up with some electric universe papers particularly the Morton Spears paper in finishing debunking that and then there's one by Ashcroft and or Ashmore and uh, one other author having to do with uh, uh, galactic rotation trying to attribute uh, electrical nature to it which is uh, wrong also that 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 paper uh, um, is just uh, a bunch of nonsense anyway so that's where it's at uh, until next time enjoy